Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Martin. Welcome to a little bit of a different video. Basically I'm going to be analysing some charts and talking about RSI. So what RSI is, if you don't know, uh, it's called Relative Strength Index. Now what Relative Strength Index is, is basically it's kind of like a mini stock chart. Um, just a little mini chart that uh, is located usually at the bottom. This is uh, an indicator that people uh, use. You know, you see some, like, some mad things. On the uh, on the screen that some people use all these are different numbers different techniques RSI is one of the more basic ones um, so as you can see uh, down here this is the RSI itself now the RSI correlates uh, with the chart itself now what it does it to put it in a uh, layman's terms it shows like uh, how many people are buying and selling at which point so as you can see say, say if we go all the way back uh, all the way back here you see the RSI here uh, you see currently there's there's two different lines here and then we have like all the movement in the middle uh the currently this number obviously it goes from zero to a hundred so the first line here is uh, calculated to 30 the second the top the higher line is calculated as 70. so we kind of have the lower the lower here and the higher here so once the so the stock price will fluctuate in between here as you can see like it's done uh, in this area here it just fluctuated in the midpoint but as you can see it took a little dip here as it did and then it, cut, it shot back up and hit that line hit this point here which hit this point here is, is correlation to this point here uh, on the stock now as you can see um, as soon as it hit that point there it dropped it just dropped as you can see it dropped on the RSI all the way down to here it dropped and the actual stock price itself went from 1.127 uh, all the way down to 1. you know 123 basically um, so what you can do is you can actually use the RSI as a really big indicator a really big helping hand into which way a stock will move in the very very short term you know this is over the course of like maybe an hour uh, holding the trade for an hour holding the trade for like 30 minutes so, um, however, the same is used for the lower. So, actually, this, this is um, this is an example of the higher. Uh, it's, it's hit that point and dropped. This point here, you can see it's hit this point here, and then it has gradually rose over time. And again, you can see it's, it hit, it's hit this point here, and uh, then it's dropped again. What this is, is the uh, definition of overbuying and overselling. So, as you can see, overbought, this is just a little article I found about it. As you can see, we have the 70-30. So um, when it gets to the 70 mark, that's being classified as being overbought. So what 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 we mean by overbought is a, a, a large amount of people have seen an opportunity to buy the stock and they've very aggressively bought the stock. So that's what's happened. So the the chart. So because um. Basically, in, especially in a sh very short term trading, if you have like. 10,000 people at one time buy the same stock for the same price that price will shoot up But then that's very very dangerous because it has been overbought itself And then the same goes with oversold so you might have someone who was overbought and then they're like okay We need to get out at this point because maybe we lost money or maybe you know people have gradually started pulling out of the initial trade and then that has caused the stock price to fall because not not as many people uh you know trading or backing up with that tr with that uh, with that stock or the currency pair uh, itself so that's become that becomes oversold and then the process just repeats itself so it, it's hit the overbought level people will then see the oversold level and then people will start to buy it again so once once uh, once the level here has been hit uh, people will stop buying and start selling until it hits this level that's just how it works um so um, so yeah, as you can see with this example, I have a couple uh, circles set up. You know, very professional circles. Very happy with my circles. <clears throat> Basically, what this shows is the correlation between the RSI and the stock price. As we know, the top line is seventy. Uh, usually, usually it doesn't tend to go over the seventy mark. Seventy is like the break point. You know, it, it hits this hit this level. It either rides the level. Sometimes it might go above the level. Most of the time, it will just drop. It might might not drop by much. Might only might only drop by a few pips, but it drops nonetheless. So um, actually, this circle, this level here, uh, the RSI has hit the top point, hit its peak, and then as you can see from there, we've had a gen a general downcline, a couple of little spikes here and there, and then but overall, it's just led to a big drop over a short amount of time. Now you, you see th this drop here is probably has happened within so 720 here 
and, and uh, 6 o'clock there, so 2 hours basically. 2 hours has gone from this level to this level. 2 hours has gone from the top RSI to the bottom RSI, it's even gone below the initial RSI. So um, usually what will happen then is people uh, will start to sell, 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 so if I follow my cursor, sell, 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 or sorry, buy, buy, buy here, sell, 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 all the way down here, till it hits a point where it's like, oh, a little spike going upward, people will start to buy, 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 until it hits uh, another like high initial level. So that process repeats itself. Um, so as you can see here, more examples is uh, over here. We have a, a little bit of a smaller example. This is like the example you see like nearly all the time. Uh, again, it's hit, hit the top RSI level. It's dropped. It's dropped here. But most people see like a green thing here. Well, not a green thing. A candlestick. Green thing. What am I on about? Uh, a candlestick going upward. You know, a positive correlation. A positive, you know, uh, indicator that it will bounce back from it and continue it high. But like I said previously, very rare for the RSI to go on above the point of 70, which means that eventually it will just drop uh, to a more smoother level. Um, so this is cut. This is just how it works for currencies. It works the same for any stock. We have we have gold over here. Everyone knows gold. So as you can see, uh, it was at a very low level here. So people started aggressively buying, really aggr aggressively buying. Uh, the strength index continued, continued to go up because more people basically got on the back of it. What you can view the strength index is, it's almost like the population of a, com of a, of a, of a country. So um, if, you, if you have like a straight line going through the middle, it's a, like it's a, an averagely populated country. Maybe if people start getting deported, people started leaving. Uh, in a very short space of time, there'll be less and less people in the country. But then, what what the what governments will do is they'll start to get people uh, to come back in the country, but they'll work it very aggressively. They'll do it very aggressively, so the so the population will go back up, go back up, go back up until it, hit, it reaches a level of overpopulation. Then, when overpopulation happens, the opposite of what I just mentioned happens and it will and then it will drop again to a lower level and then the process just keeps on going on keeps on fluctuating the process never stops same thing with stock trading uh, the process never stops we do have a very high uh, climbing uh, marks like Bitcoin for example is, is insane you, you can't use RSI for Bitcoin um, it just it, it, it just fluctuates way too much. It's too much of a volatile stock. But some currencies, and I found commodities, it works quite well with commodities such as gold, silver. Um, I've even tested it with like wheat and sugar and stuff. Um, but overall, uh, this process usually works with uh, commodities and currencies. I'll stay off stuff like Bitcoin and uh, company stocks like JP Morgan. It's just, it's not as. Um, you know, stuff like that would be based on real life events. The stock price would be based on real life events, but that's beside the point. So you have this level here. You see, it's actually really over the point here. But um, because gold is quite a strong stock, uh, the RSI might work, not work as well because people would be like, okay, this is cool. It, it's hit the top level RSI. It's quite high at the stock chart itself. I'm gonna sell. People, people will start to, as you can see, people start to sell here. That's why there's two, two very qu quite large candlesticks moving downward. Um, some people might even get out here. I see people did get out of the trade here because you see it's currently overbought here. Then it's gone back to the initial level, which is uh, this down point here near the near the edge of the circle. And then people start buying again because um, people think gold just goes up all the time. Um, so then it, it, it rode basically the same level um, until uh, the strength index. You can see the strength index got weaker and weaker over time. And usually what happens if it gets weaker and weaker over time, uh, just like a stock price, but if it, if it gets weaker and weaker over time, it's eventually going to have a big drop. So the big drop happened right here, this area here. It uh, went from uh, 19, sorry, 1294 all the way down to 1291. Um, and then it was at this level here. You can see... This bit, this part here has been this has been oversold, so that it'll, it'll it will go back up uh, eventually. Actually, it did go back up there, and then it then it dropped again. But usually, what happens is if you set your stop loss wide enough, uh, then it won't hit a negative level 
uh, or you, you you won't get cashed out with your trade, and then you can reap the benefits as the RSI gets stronger, as people start to buy again more aggressively. Um, I found that especially, like I said previously, especially short term trading, the stock price is very very manipulative by people, not the stock itself, not by companies, not by news, not by media, by the actual traders themselves. So um. As you can see here, gold is gold is currently now on that. Uh, that this is like current stock price. Uh, gold is currently on that RSI level now. As you can see, it's start, it's starting to drop a bit now. So by the time this video is finished, it might not be a surprise to see it at like, the lower levels here. But you know, again, you don't know what's going to happen. Um, but uh, the, I found that the RSI is like for very short term trading, for almost scalping, even scalping, scalp trading. Is a uh, is a very very uh, resourceful way of trading. So um, I do recommend using an RSI. I always have the RSI open, and I uh, I do like it a lot. Like I said before, it really depends on the actual stock itself. If you're going to use it on Bitcoin, you might you might have troubles with it, and stocks like that you might have troubles with it. But the process basically repeats itself, and you have to learn the entry point and the exit point, when to get in the trade. Uh, you know, an analyzing the stock price itself, analyzing the RSI, and then getting in the trade at the right time, and then uh, and then also judging or you know keeping an eye on the RSI, keeping an eye on the stock itself, looking at the movement and deciding when to get out. So um, yeah, like I said, you speak is like I said before, it's gonna go down. It's gone down. Uh, it's dropped by quite a few pips. Uh, again. Um, as you see, the RSI is currently dipping back to the middle level now. When I when I started talking about it, uh, it was at a very high point. Now it's at, you know is going towards the middle point. Um, if if I was on if I was on a trading if I was trading right now, I would have put a, a sell on here because that's what everybody else would do. Everybody would put a sell. Then because everybody's put a, a, a sell on it, um, or sorry, a short position because everyone's put a short position on the trade. Uh, on the stock sorry that means that the price overall is going to go down because people are betting against it not for it so um yeah overall rsi is once uh definitely for beginning traders and you know people like myself uh who were who were you know younger traders blah blah uh you know get again into the game quite young and stuff like that you need to know which indicators make a difference and this indicator definitely makes a difference in my opinion it's one of the best indicators i've used this so basically, uh, my indicators, I only, I only use this and Bollinger Bands. I don't even really follow the Bollinger Bands. I just use it, you know, because it's, it's nice to see the... Uh, it's almost like a mini stop loss take profit, but it's not real. If you know what I mean? Like, it's just... It shows me the low point and the high point. So, um, you know, or the stock price itself. I don't know, it's a bit weird. Um, it's in my head, can't really explain it. But, um, yeah, RSI is definitely, definitely the one of the best um, indicators that you could possibly use. Um, and I hope, hope I hope I explained it well enough. Um, if you're going to learn about RSI, you need to uh, also understand the uh, definitions of overbuying and overselling. I might do a different video about that entirely, but you need, definitely need, need to do research on overbuying and overselling because you can't really use the relative strength index unless you know about overbuying and overselling, which is very very important. So um. If you did enjoy this video and it gave you a little bit of an indication on how to use RSI, make sure to leave a like, comment down below if you do want any more like little mini instructional videos uh, or little um, oh, that's my earphone destroyed. If you like these like instructional videos or talky videos about uh, a specific thing inside of forex training, I do like doing them a lot because not only am I helping you guys out, but I'm also helping my helping myself out, which is always great. I mean, <laughs> but um. Yeah, so probably this price, uh, if this is going to go up now quite a, quite a bit because um, the strength index is quite medium. So this, the gold is probably, most probably going to go up a little bit. But again, that doesn't really matter. Oh, this is Euro USD. Sorry, the gold is gonna yeah, the gold is probably going to go up a little bit now because it's on spike. I looked at the wrong chart. Don't worry. Like I said, if you enjoyed it, make sure you like, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, comment if I did a good job and you want to see more uh, instructional videos like this because I'm trying to get into the more uh, being being able to talk about it openly and being able to you know have enough knowledge so I can talk about it off by heart, able to show examples like I've done here uh, with these little circles. And yeah, um, if you enjoyed it, make sure you like, comment down below.
Uh, give me any improvements, any tips if I'm like if I need to use more terminology, anything like that. Any tips on my presentational skills would be amazing. Um, yeah, so uh, make sure to check out the books in the description below. I actually think the book I mentioned this in like literally two videos in a row now. The book uh, Forex for Ambitious Beginners, uh, wrote by Jenny Peters. Uh, it's, it's in the uh, link in the description below on the on the Amazon. Uh, it has a really big section on relative strength and index and a lot of uh, other indicators that should be used. So it's a very, very good tool. But like I said, you can just use the internet and stuff like that to learn about it. All right. <laughs> End of the video. Have a nice day. Stay safe and peace.